can an NBA player jump so high that their chin is above the rim? On one of Michael Jordan's legendary dunks, his head was so close to the hoop, he could practically kiss the rim. Gerald Green blew out a candle on the rim, and he can basically look into the hoop. So what would it take for someone to get their entire head above the rim? Well, last week, we finally got the answer. AJ Green. A little tough floater. Oh! Much to the delight of the Kings bench, Andre cleared the rim on this dunk, and it might be the highest an NBA player has ever been in a game. And what's shocking about this is that Jackson was only fifth in the vertical leap at last year's combine, and he's only about 6'6", so how in the world did he get so high? Jackson's official combine vertical leap was measured at 39 and a half inches, which is some great bounciness, but it means his maximum head height would be about 9 feet 10 inches off the floor. And yet his head is well over the rim here, reaching closer to 11 feet. So did Jackson get the right training program over the summer and develop the world's greatest vertical? Was there a spring in the floorboard in Sacramento? or was something else pushing Andre to new heights? This is not the first gravity-defying dunk to go viral. 11 years ago, Victor Dukes looked into the rim at Arkansas State, and eight years ago, Taekwon Scott flew like Superman at Herkimer College. So how are these players able to do this when physics says they shouldn't? On a normal vertical leap, a player accelerates off the floor, reaches an apex, and then comes back down to the ground. And that flight path is basically determined by their jumping force off the floor. But on this play, Scott's flight path is changed by a teammate jumping into him while he's in the air. In other words, some of his jumping force is transferred to Scott, giving him an extra boost mid-flight. On Jackson's dunk, it wasn't a teammate, but the opponent jumping up and into him well in the air to provide that boost. And this contact can take place on different parts of the body. LeBron's right leg hits Kevin Love's arms here, and Love is bracing himself, and that gives James a little extra lift in the air to go and touch the sky. And we call this lift the Chambers Boost, a term coined by J. Kyle Mann to describe this subtle mid-air assist a leaper gets from another player. And it's named after Tom Chambers' legendary 1989 dunk over Mark Jackson, where he uses his knees to springboard off Jackson's chest and jump over him. And even though Jackson wasn't jumping, he's still providing a boost by anchoring himself to the floor. Victor Dukes literally uses his defender as a stool with his foot, but the same physics are in play when a leaper hits someone with their knees or even their arms. In fact, many of the great facials served up in NBA history have a subtle chambers boost to them, including Blake Griffin's collection of baptisms back in the Lob City Clipper days, where he caught a little boost from his poster victims on the way up. And even when poor Timofey Mozgov came over to take a charge, again, those arms into the midsection provided a little extra hang time to help Blake throw it in the rim. You can actually see how much force is displaced horizontally on these Blake examples, with Pow and him crashing into each other, and Mozgov sort of holds Blake up from moving toward the basket, and the more vertical the direction of this force, the more of a vertical boost the leaper receives. And the boost is subtle but also profound. On a normal Blake Griffin mega dunk, he's in the air for about eight tenths of a second. On the Mozgov dunk, he was up there for nine tenths of a second, and when he crushed Pau Gasol's face, he was airborne for nearly a second. A 20 or 25 percent increase in hang time might not sound like much, but a similar increase in jump height means jumping to about 9 feet versus 11 feet, so it's actually an enormous change in hang time. 
If we go back to Kyle Mann's favorite Chambers boost, Dirk Minifield was in the air for something like 1.15 seconds in 1983. To put this into perspective, one of the great aerial athletes of the player tracking era, Zach Levine, is only up in the air for around nine tenths of a second on a typical jump. Years ago, sports science brought in Jordan Farmar to test out his hang time, and he peaked at just over eight tenths of a second. And that's about how long Michael Jordan was in the air on his famous foul line dunk in the 88 dunk contest. The Chambers boost has actually taken over the dunk contest before, going back to Nate Robinson using Dwight Howard's back as a springboard to launch over him in 2009. Now, that doesn't mean a 5'9 human jumping over a 6'10 person isn't an impressive or visually stunning dunk. We're just observing the phenomenon here. Nate's unassisted dunk over Spud Webb in 2006 still had incredible hang time, but he used that little boost just to clear Howard. Mac McClung is another multi-time winner who loves to boost, only he pushes off the ball, which is being held by a spotter while he stands on the floor. McClung's normal hang time on an unspotted dunk is close to that 9 tenths mark because he's an absurd leaper, but he has a hang time of 1.05 seconds on this dunk, and you can see his spotter's neck buckle a little from the extra force Mac gets pushing down into the ball before he scoops it up for the finish. Aaron Gordon took the dunk contest chambers boost to new heights, literally in his legendary 2006 showdown with Levine, where Gordon uses the same trick to boost himself over the mascot, and this is a borderline gymnastics move, with Aaron's head above the rim and a total flight time of more than 1.1 seconds. That's more than 30% of the hang time he had on a non-boosted dunk from that same contest. Most Chambers boosts aren't that extreme though. Anthony Edwards takes a page out of Blake Griffin's book, throwing this ball in after he hits John Collins, but he's only slightly higher and with a touch more hang time than his usual all-out unassisted leaps. Two of LeBron's most viral, mind-bending leaping efforts had extremely subtle Chambers boosts. He gets more of a nudge up in the air to jump over John Lucas III, and his eyes look like they were above the rim against Portland after receiving just a subtle bump on the way up that actually turned him around in the air. Even Vince Carter's Olympic dunk has a little forearm assist on the way up as he stuffed poor Frederick Weiss into the annals of basketball history. Until last week, my collection of Chambers boosts was limited to dunks. There was this one time that Shannon Brown caught a bump blocking Mario West, but these would almost always be fouls like this, and so you don't really see Chambers boosts on defense. But then this happened. Minnesota, three-point lead. He missed it. Pacers are not going with a timeout. They advance the ball. Neesmith lays it up. Oh, man. Oh, man is right. And Edwards got a Chambers boost from Jaden McDaniels and hit his head on the rim while blocking this shot to save the game. And he was going chin level to the basket if he didn't hit his head because of his incredible vertical and the boost from J-Mac. And it's clearly not the safest play. Thankfully, the man can fall like a cat. But I'm not sure anything is cooler and more unique than a Chambers boost block. Essentially, Newton's laws are at work here in one way or another. Force equals mass times acceleration and all that, with one object exerting a force on another with an equal and opposite reaction and all that wonderful high school goodness. So next time you see someone's head around or above the rim, check to see if there's an extra point of contact that alters their flight path in the air before they throw it down or apparently even block the shot because it just might be the result of the incredible Chambers boost. There was actually a video game called Lakers vs. Celtics that gave Tom Chambers a double clutch unstoppable dunk from like the three point line because of this famous Chambers boost dunk. 
If you want to support this channel directly, check out patreon.com slash thinking basketball. Otherwise, let me know your thoughts down below on this one. And as always, I hope you're having a great day.